Hey everyone, this is John Robinson with Blueprint. Today is April 29th, 2022, and this is a monthly asset allocation update video. In this month's uh, written form piece, uh, we discuss a very important topic to you and, and, and certainly to us, and that is this concept or notion of risk and how uh, it is a four letter word technically, and depending on your vantage point, uh, whether you see risk as a positive or a negative, uh, it can hold uh, many different connotations and many different definitions that bring up certain emotions. And we talk about specifically uh, measuring risk uh, over certain time frames and how we at Blueprint use uh, various time frames to determine market risk using trend following techniques that help us gauge changing environments where we may raise our allocation exposure in some asset classes depending on the trend in some environments and vice versa we may decrease exposure in other environments depending on the risk of that market as determined or measured by trend so if you haven't already i would encourage you to go back and look at our longer form written piece uh, it's in that piece that we also talk a little bit more in depth about the asset allocation changes uh, that you'll hear in this video so with that what are the asset allocation changes heading into May? Well, as you might imagine, uh, as trend followers, card carrying trend followers, uh, the timeframes that we utilize to gauge risk, risk has um, increased and it's increased substantially in US equities, uh, which means that we have downtrends that have emerged in US stocks, both in the intermediate term and the long term, which means for our strategies that we will be decreasing uh, US equity risk. From an asset allocation perspective, we'll be decreasing it uh, not to minimum levels, but uh, certainly in the, uh, the, the bottom quartile of where we could be uh, near minimum levels to U.S. equities. And in our strategies that utilize single stocks, we will have more equity exposure than the, than the asset class based strategies will, just by the very nature that there are um, plenty of single stocks, particularly on the value side, that have uh, that remain in rising trends over both time frames so because of our handoff process we will push exposure from uh, stocks that are weak or are weakening like uh, in technology up to those more value oriented sectors but at the asset class level we will and single stock level uh, we will certainly be decreasing exposure heading into may secondly the international stocks and emerging market stocks remain uh, weak on an absolute and relative basis and with downtrends in both the intermediate term and the long term and they will remain at minimum levels. Uh, real estate remains um, on a relative basis the strongest asset class in the portfolio um, and with rising trends in both the intermediate term and the long term. So exposure there will remain unchanged. Uh, we are at our baseline allocation which is a, near its maximum allocation and that will remain unchanged going into May. Fixed income wise, fixed income remains as, as rates have uh, steadily increased with the expectation that there is more to come. Not the prediction, but the expectation that there is more to come. Uh, fixed income will remain at uh, minimum allocations due to downtrends across timeframes, as well as inflation protected securities. Um, downtrends across timeframes there and um, that's been the case for about uh, two or three months, even as inflation in, in non-financial assets, more commodity assets have, has continued to rise, hitting, you know, hitting or equaling new all-time highs. Uh, the financial assets reflected by tips, uh, they have remained weak. Uh, alternatives, which is uh, expressed with gold, remains in a rising trend. It's somewhat choppy. We talk about that in the, in the written piece. Uh, it's been somewhat choppy and sideways, but just strong enough to remain in rising trends over the intermediate and the long term. And then short duration fixed income will rise uh, due to the decrease in exposure from U.S. equities. Uh, we will push that exposure or hand that exposure off to short, ultra short term duration bonds of, of durations uh, settling around the three to six month range. And this is where we've been in our the fixed income portion of our book where we've, where we've been for uh, about a year now. So what does this look like uh, graphically? Well, 
it can really be summed up in, uh, with one arrow, and that is that exposure from U.S. equities is getting pushed over to U.S. Treasuries in the form of ultra short-term duration fixed income. So what are the key takeaways? Well, U.S. equities are in downtrends, uh, intermediate and long-term. The asset cl class level uh, will experience a, a larger decrease than the uh, strategies that utilize single stocks, but by and large, every strategy will uh, experience a decrease in equity exposure mainly from the U.S. as we're already at minimum allocations in emerging in foreign stocks. Um, this decrease will hand to ultra short-term fixed income. Uh, in this rising rate environment that we've experienced in the last um, six months or possibly even nine or so months as fixed income has weakened in the U.S. and globally, uh, the uh, blueprint portfolios have steadily decreased their duration and we've been at minimum levels of duration now for um, about nine months. So um, lastly here, honor thy risk. You know, we talk about risk in the, in the written piece and really this just boils down to staying disciplined. We, we talk a lot about uh, behavior and, and investor behavior. We think that that is a critical ingredient to long-term success in markets. And hindsight bias is one of those biases that can creep up, especially if you're systematic, as you're making at allocation shifts based on the data, to look back and, and think or basically reframe uh, the past, which deceives you into thinking that you knew more than you did uh, when you made a decision 30 days ago, 90 days ago, 120 days ago. And as systematic managers, um, number one, we have to be aware of that. And we have to be aware of that not only from ourselves, but we have to be uh, aware of that as your teammate, as advisors, um, to caution you against it as well, because no one is immune to these things. It's in our DNA as humans. And so uh, the, the thing that we often think about in these environments as we have um, volatility rising, uh, trends changing, uh, from uh, whether from up to down or down to up, we have sideways choppy markets. And there is a natural inclination to think in hindsight that you know, we knew more than we did. And that's why we really focus in on being disciplined and following the data. Because uh, unless the data is tortured, it, it does not lie to us. And remaining objective is the key, at least in our view, is the key to uh, long-term compounding and preserving compounding over the long run. And that's really the goal. You know, the goal for us is to help you help your clients meet their financial goals. And that means to uh, preserve and keep compounding at or near its highest point so that the client can achieve the goal that you help them establish, whether uh, verbally, on paper, or inside of a financial plan. So. Our plan and our process is completely transparent to you so that you know that we're remaining disciplined and we will remain disciplined. We'll execute our rules and our strategies and we'll continue to do that uh, un until as long as Blueprint is around. And so uh, we will, you can trust us for that, um, that we will re remain consistent and reliable in the application of our rules no matter what geopolitical events are happening, no matter what the news says, no matter what earnings reports are coming out. Uh, we will remain disciplined and, and true to our strategy. So, um, as I always ask, concluding this video, you know, what can we do for you? We're doing uh, calls with advisory firms. We're doing calls with advisory firms and their clients. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, white label pieces that are going out. Um, with markets changing and changing rapidly and, and, and risk rising, um, you know, is there any data that we could get you to help explain the this, this story better to your client, or at least give your client some comfort, uh, those that get a little bit nervous during these times, which is perfectly natural and expected. So if there is anything, we'd, I would encourage you to reach out to us. You can reach out to me directly. My number's on the screen and email. You can go to blueprintip.com to learn more uh, about how to get in touch with us. Visit us on LinkedIn. Um, or just visit our website to learn a little bit more about what we do because everything is there. Uh, there is no black box. Even though we're systematic, we are completely transparent in everything we do. So with that, 
thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. And I look forward to seeing you back here at the end of May. Thanks. Thank you.